Hey guys, welcome back to another book diary. This one is for Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas. This is the third book in the Throne of Glass series, although if you count the novellas as the first book then it's the fourth, but this is like the third book in the core series. I've been a little negligent starting this book diary so I am already on page 128. So first I'm going to tell you what I remember about this book. I remember not liking the first half and thinking it was really slow and then I remember it getting epic towards the end. However, as we all discovered in my Crown of Midnight vlog, I don't really remember which book is which in the Throne of Glass series. So the things that happen at the end of this, or that I think happen at the end of this, may only happen in Queen of Shadows. I don't know. As usual, this is going to be a spoilery vlog. I'm going to do this a little bit more like the style of the Warstorms one that I did, where it is more reaction and less of me going, I just read 50 pages, this is what I think. And we'll see how that goes. But I need to catch you up on the first 100 pages I've read. The first time around, I didn't care about Manon. Now that I've read the later books and know that I love Manon, so into her chapters, I think that's why I thought it was slow the first time around, because I didn't care about Manon. And I didn't care about Selena being in Wendelin. And I still don't care about Selena being in Wendelin. Because the first time I read this, all I wanted was Selena to go back to Adalyn to be with Kaol. This time around, all I want is to read about Manon. So I don't care too much about what Kaol and Dorian are doing at the minute. And I don't care what Selena and Rowan are doing at the minute. Because they're just trekking through the woods. The only person I'm interested in right now is Manon. Obviously, I know all the narratives tie together and then everything becomes relevant, but that's where I'm at at the minute. So Rowan is an asshole. I remember why I didn't like... Well, no, I remember I didn't like him. Like, I much prefer Kaol to Rowan, but I couldn't remember why, and it's because of how mean and nasty and aggressive and... <sighs> There's another word. There's another word, but I can't remember. Anyway, he's just an asshole, and then he bites her, and I'd be like, bitch, don't touch me, because that's bang out of line like I know from Akamath that it's a territorial thing and like he said you shouldn't bite another male's woman and all that bullshit like he does grow on me like I do oh look I'm rendering a video um I do kind of like him I don't love him he's not my OTP of the series that will always be Selena and Kaol but I do end up liking him in the end but yeah he's a dick another thing is that I only really care about the witches because unlike the first time I read it when I was waiting for Selena to go back to Kale. So I was like all into those narratives. Now I know that Selena is not going back to Kale. She's going to stick with Rowan because whatever reasons, I don't remember. I don't care where those narratives are going as much as I did the first time around. But I am loving Manon's chapters because the first time around I didn't like her at all, so I didn't care. But now my badass, beautiful queen is just slaying and I love it. I just want to read this excerpt from chapter 14, like I'm way past there now, I'm on like chapter 20 something, but I started the vlog late as I said and I just needed to share this with you. It is a passage from chapter 14 and let's see if this reminds you of anybody. And there she saw him, the man standing behind the barrow. Not a white, she glimpsed only a flash of pale skin, night dark hair, unfathomable beauty and an onyx talk around his strong column of a neck and blackness a wave of it slamming down on her not oblivion but actual dark as if he'd thrown a blanket over the two of them um oh my god that was so common as if he'd thrown a blanket over the two of them major reese and vibes so much reese just like it's just it sounds like Reese, and I don't know if that's intentional, but that to me just screamed Reese and. I just read the chapter where Abraxas arrived, and I forgot how sweet he was. He's literally the cutest thing ever, and I love him so much. I remember when Meraki candles, well, before they shut down, and they had an Abraxas candle, and I really wanted it. And I put loads on my Christmas wish list, but then nobody bought me the Abraxas one, and I just, oh, God, I love him so much. Whenever you have, like, those tags, and it's, like, what, fictional magical creature would you want it's like not only do i want a wyvern i want a braxus specifically oh my god this sun i had a thought earlier when i was reading about why a braxus is called a braxus how do i do this how do i there we go nope nope not helping is this there we go and 
she said that she called she named Abraxas after a snake that guards the earth or something and it reminded me of the Midgard worm in Norse mythology and then the witches also worship the three-faced goddess who is like the three fits in geek mythology and then I felt like a mythology nerd because I read some mythology books in March or April and I actually retained some information which is good. This sun is just like relentless. And then that also made me think about the Midgard word worm in A Court of Thousand Roses which sounds like the Midgard word worm and yeah I'm like in the mythology because A Court of Mist and Fury is a Hades and Persephone retelling as well. So Sarah J Maas clearly like does know her mythology and I love mythology. It's just great. Like I just I'm not a religious person, but I I feel like I would be so much more behind religion if it was mythology because that would be cool. And like dragons and Pegasus and all that fun stuff. I'm still fighting the sun, but I just got to a part where Selena says to Rowan the she doesn't need him to make her feel worthless because she can do it all right and it's on her own and the paramore song is stuck in my head now um it's caught in the middle where it's like i don't need no help i can sabotage me by myself don't need no one else i, c I can't breathe anymore but yeah that was just like stuck in my head for ages when i read that bit so i thought i'd share it with you i think it's funny that adian and selena both assume that they would hate each other now because of the things that they'd done speaking of adian he's probably one of my favorite characters like i like him a lot more than i like rowan he's just a, a stand-up sexy fae half fae fae heritage guy also really interesting that they have like a completely different attitude towards marrying each other like selena's like hell no i would never marry adian whereas adian's like yeah i'd do it if i had to if she wanted me to i'd marry her i just can't wait for everyone to meet up you know like everyone's all spread out and i just want i can't even remember i don't even think it's in this book but i can't remember manon and what she does and how she comes becomes relevant to the plot line so i'm waiting i'm waiting for manon because she's pretty much all I care about. Like, she just stole the spider silk to put on Abraxas' wings, and I'm like, yes, girl, you slay, you do this. So, who are these creepy guys in collars? I don't remember. This is the really strange thing about rereading this. Like, you think I'd know what was happening, but like, I don't remember. I don't remember what happens with Ren and Murtag. I don't remember when Lysandra turns up, because I'm waiting for that. I don't remember who these guys are with the collars. I don't really remember the thing with the black rings, although I do know about the black stones and like to do with magic and control and stuff. And I think I remember the reveal at the end of this book. But like, who are the guys with the black collars? What are they? It's something to do with the Valg, but I don't remember. Like, I just, I have no idea. Shout out to Adian for calling Kale out and being an absolute wuss. I forgot how much of a coward he was in this book, but he really is. Like, he won't pick a side. He's all about honour, but he doesn't have the whatever it is that it takes him to make a decision. Like, he just can't, he can't fight for something. He can't decide what to fight for and it's really sad because I used to love Kale I used to think he was great and I do still love Kale like that will always be my favorite pair in for Selena Selena and Kale but yeah he's just a complete wuss in this book and it's it's sad I think that Kale's character gets like completely destroyed throughout the course of the rest of this series I'm guessing he redeems himself or Sarah J Mass chooses to redeem him in Tower of Dawn which I still have not read yet and there's also something that happens to Kale which leaves him in a position to go for Tower of Dawn but I don't remember how that happens like I know what the outcome of whatever happens is but I don't remember how it gets like that so yeah I'm hoping that Tower of Dawn is going to be good because Kale's reputation and life and everything is in tatters after Crown of Midnight. Here I am again in the sun unable to see because that seems to be my brand right now. I forgot that all the slaves in Calcola and Endovia were killed and now I'm kind of sad. So I just thought I'd let you know that I'm sad. I thought she freed them. How could I not remember this? What happens, I guess? Why do I even bother reading books? I literally remember nothing that happens ever. I'm getting so nervous now because everything's kicking off, like Rowan and Selena are preparing for battle against the Valk creature things. And I know that Kale's gonna leave for Aniel, but I don't think he ever does leave for Aniel, and 
things are heating up over there and I know it's going to end badly for Sasha and I, I know that it ends badly for Sasha. What is on my hand? And yeah, I know it ends badly for Sasha but I don't really remember what happens with that so I'm getting kind of nervous for that and just it's getting into the last 100 pages soon so I know that things are going to kick off and it's going to be epic and it's going to be tragic and yeah, I'm not sure I'm ready for it. I just love that moment when everyone's at the theatre and they start playing all of the, I guess the like national anthems of all of the fallen countries. <sighs> It's just so tragic, but that's like completely what I'm into. Like my aesthetic is tragic. I love anything that's like super angsty and tragic and it just like gets me in the soul, you know? Oh, yeah. Like I love that. I love that drama. The cadre have just arrived and I love the cadre so much. I really need Charlie Bowater who does the art. Like, you know, the picture of the inner circle. Like I'll insert something here, but that that inner circle picture i have it on a blanket you might have seen it there i need her to do with a throne of glass one but it's so hard because you have like the terrorism group and like dorian's group and the 13 and the cadre and there's just so many characters but anyway i love the cadre and lorcan first time lorcan's here and i'm i'm so excited oh hello guess where i am again yep in the sun with no sunglasses the end of chapter 54 got me in the heart with all of the like sacrifice and then everyone like Sam came and I was just like oh, Sam and told her to get up. The battle all resolved a little too convenient like how convenient like Selena had thought for a long time that Rowan was a Karanan. So yeah that was convenient. I still love this book though I'm trash for Sarah J Maas. I've just found out that the amulet of Orinth is the third word key which I completely forgot about. How could I forget that? I'm pretty sure Lorcan has it at some point, but I don't know. I have like 80 pages left and like I'm so eager to finish this because it takes me a while to get through these books because they're huge. But at the same time, I don't want it to end because I love these worlds. I really do. And I'm just going to go back to reading in the sun. I have to cook dinner soon. But I'm just, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying this pace. The war games where the witches have to capture the eggs from each clan's nest and then put them in their own. Like this whole scene just reminds me of Goblet of Fire with the um Triwizard Tournament? Is that what it's called? Oh my god, I need to reread Harry Potter. It's been it's been a while and I haven't watched the films like all the way through, like all of them in two years, I think. So I need to rewatch that because wow that was bad. But yeah. It reminds me of that. The war games remind me of the Triwizard Tournament. I hope it's called the Triwizard Tournament. <sighs> Maybe I just need to sleep. Right, so I remembered that Kale didn't go to any L. But the king has summoned them all to his throne room or whatever. So Idian, Dorian, Sasha and Kale. And I don't remember why. And it's so tense. I think this something bad happens to Sasha, but I don't know what happens to anybody else. So I forgot about Adrian and Dorian. I thought they all got out together. Although I thought this book ended differently. I'm not gonna say how, because spoilers for you that have read Era Fire and not Queen of Shadows. But I think that I thought the end of Queen of Shadows was the end of this one. So I don't remember and Dorian getting a collar on and um, Adrian being captured. I have no idea how Adrian gets out and I don't know what happens with Dorian and the collar. Hmm, Sasha I know about. I don't know what happens with Kale now. Yeah, I've got, I've got like 10 pages left. So, I'm done with Arrow Fire. I will show it to you but it's just jacketless so not very exciting. Also, you vibe in my hair right now. It's beautiful, isn't it? See, I like having long hair, but I don't do anything with it. Like, literally, it just gets in my way. So I do this. Anyway, the book. Five stars, but I enjoyed it for a different reason than I enjoyed it the first time. The first time around, I only cared about Selena and what she was doing, and I was waiting for her to go back to Kale. This time, I only cared about the witches, but this kind of... It feels like a filler book in the series because it's just bridging the Selena chapter with the Alien chapter. So now she's going to go back as Selena and put things into place to take over the world as Alien. So it does feel like the filler book in the series. But I'm hyped to start Queen of Shadows. I am going to take a little break from the series because I don't like to read them back to back because they're too 
too dense. But I will be back with that book diary, which could possibly be my next one. Book diaries I have coming up are Life Light by Jay Kristoff. Whenever that arrives, then I read it. I have Fury Born, The Smoke Thieves, Queen of Shadows. One of those will be coming to you soon. But that is it from me today. Like, subscribe, whatever. I never sign off my blogs properly because I'm just like not in the zone. But yeah, air fire, five stars. I'm going to sleep because I was supposed to have an early night and I haven't. Good night.